This year marks the third running of the Aviva Women's Tour of Britain, which in a very short period of time has become one of the, if not the most prestigious stage races in the women's calendar. Now, looking down the initial start list, this year has attracted riders from no fewer than 22 different nations, and there are 14 national champions due to be on the start line. Good facts there, Dan. Thank you. Now, for 2016, the race is five stages long, as it always has been. But this year, the organisers have looked to make it a little bit harder and a little bit more selective. So for that, read climbing. Mm. But they'll have to wait past stage one, which looks reasonably flat and takes place, as it always has done, in the county of Suffolk, starting in Southwold. Now, we are fully expecting 132 kilometres later, a big bunch sprint as they head into Norwich city centre. Yeah, and then the following day, the race heads into Warwickshire for the first time. It's the longest stage of the race, 140 k's and there is 1,772 metres of ascent, meaning that this stage could be selective, if not decisive. Stage three, though, could be decisive. And selective? Mm, probably both, I guess. Right. Uh, yeah, it's the shortest stage of the race, at 112, uh, just over 112 kilometres, but it's got almost 2,000 metres of climbing as it heads from Ashbourne over the notoriously tough Peak District Roads in the National Park there in Derbyshire. Now, it does have a long descent into Chesterfield at the end of that stage, but we are expecting the climbs of Winster, which is a long, steady affair, and Bank Row, which is steep at the bottom and then drags over the moors at the top, to be decisive before that point. We do. Now, stage four sees the race start in Nottingham and finish in Stoke-on-Trent. Both cities that played host to the Men's Tour of Britain on several occasions, but this is the first time they'll be taking part in the women's event. And that stage is 120 kilometres long. The final day, at just 113k, goes from Northampton to Kettering. Now, taking the start line will be 16 teams of six riders, and that includes the brand new squad of Canyon SRAM. They will field last year's winner, Lisa Brenau of Germany. Now, she's been consistent so far this year, but she's yet to take a win. 96. Well done. 96 riders on the start line. Now, the winner of the inaugural event, Mariana Voss, will return this year. She missed last year's event, and in fact, most of the season through injury. But I think it's fair to say both spectators and her fellow competitors are going to be eagerly awaiting her return to see whether she can go back to her previous level. Yeah, she's got a very good team with her too, amongst whom are Anna van der Breggen, who recently has been training in altitude in preparation for both the Rio Olympics and also this event. Yeah, now arguably the biggest attraction for the home crowd is going to be world champion Lizzie Armitstead. Now, she had a bittersweet race last year. She won the first stage, put her arms aloft, and then crashed literally metres later. And we think that she may have the dubious honour of being the only rider ever to have led a race and never put on the leader's jersey, given that she was in an ambulance instead of on the podium and she couldn't start stage two. I think you're probably right, good fact. Thanks. Uh, well, she well and truly kicked the Curse of the Rainbow jersey into touch at the very start of this season. In fact, she's taken part in nine one-day races so far and won five of them, which is a remarkable hit rate, which I think even the great Eddie Merckx would have been proud of back in his time. In fact, the only better hit rate I can think of is one Cy Richardson, who won two out of two cycling across Bristol leagues last year. That's true. but. I must say that that's only because the juniors started at a different time and I probably would have got beaten by yeah. them. Now remarkably, this will be Lizzie's first UCI stage race of the year, so this will also serve as a very important stepping stone in her build up to Rio. Yeah, another Brit actually, who is gunning for the Olympics, is Emma Pooley, back after two years dabbling in triathlon, among other things. She leads a pretty strong, very young British team, including friend of GCN and someone you may have turbo trained along with, Jesse Walker. Mm. Well, also on the start line will be last year's runner-up, Jolien Dorr, who is now racing for the Wiggle High Five squad, who are also very strong. They've got at least Longo Borghini and Emma Johansson, who are both potential winners of the event. Right, time has come, Si. It has. To make our predictions. Yeah. Who do you think will win the third edition of the Women's Aviva Tour of Britain? Dan, I'm going to say... Lizzie Armitstead. Now, I know she hasn't raced all that much recently, but I just think her form this year and her confidence this year are second to none. And she's going to want to make amends for last year. How about you? I am going for... Elisa Longo 
Borghini. Slightly left field, I know, for the Women's Tour of Britain. However, she showed some great form over in Philadelphia recently. I just think she's got all the attributes to win a very tough edition of the race. She is misconsistent, so yeah, maybe one to watch. Mm. Now, this isn't just the only race going on at the moment. The Men's Tour of Switzerland is also going to be brilliant. And so why not check out our preview of the race? You can click through to that just up there. Yeah, meanwhile down there, if you've missed it, is the latest edition of the GCN show. And do make sure you subscribe to GCN before leaving this video. To do that, you can click on the globe, which will be here. Yeah, and if you like the video, thumbs up.